Welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and I am fresh, never frozen. Let me ask you a question. When you feed your snakes, live or frozen thawed? If you do feed live, have you ever thought about or tried making the switch to frozen thawed? If the question is, yeah, I've thought about it, or I tried it once but my snake didn't eat it so I went back to live, then stick around because today we are going to go over some things that you can do to help your snake switch from eating live to frozen thawed. So up front, I am not looking to cast any judgment on how you feed your snake. I do have a preference based on my own experience, feelings, and research, etc. You may go a different direction, and that is your thing. But generally speaking, feeding frozen thawed is accepted as the best practice and the approach most snake owners take. And for good reason. It's safer for the snake, it's less traumatic for the mouse or rat, you can buy them in bulk and store them in your freezer, which saves you money. And of course, there's the added benefit that if your snake refuses to eat the live mouse or rat, you're not left with a new household pet. But there are arguments for the side of feeding live as well. It is natural, obviously the closest to how your snake would eat in the wild. There may be a small increase in nutritional value feeding live versus frozen thawed. Lots of keepers say offering live prey is a great source of enrichment. And this is true for some snakes. When I worked at the pet store, I would hear stories regularly from customers coming in to buy live feeders that they had to go down a size in rats because there was that one time when the rat bit the snake and now the snake is scared of rats that size. Or how they will only eat mice now because it was a rat that bit the snake. So how much enrichment do you really think that snake is getting out of continuing to eat live? Because it sounds very much to me like eating live stressed that snake out. And I feel bad for those snakes because there are so many other ways to offer enrichment to your snake without putting them into fight or flight mode and stressing them out when you're feeding them. In my opinion, frozen thought is the way to go. And like I mentioned, most snake keepers agree. For those snake owners at the store I mentioned a minute ago, when I suggested or asked if they had tried switching over from live, the most common answer was, yeah, I tried it once or twice, but my snake wouldn't eat it, so I just went back to feeding live. And uh, I can't help but shake my head a bit. Let me ask you guys this. Do you like change? If you've always done something one way and someone comes along and tells you you have to do that thing in a new way, which is very different from the old way, do you just roll with the punches, so to speak, and accept it without any feelings of resistance or resentment towards that change? It's okay, you don't need to say anything because I already know what that answer is going to be because most of us have some resistance to change. So if we, as the intelligent species that can communicate the reasons behind why the change has to happen or how it would benefit us, etc., we still resist the change, why would we expect a snake who's used to feeding live to automatically accept frozen thought on the first go? And why do we as keepers assume that if the snake doesn't take it on the first try or the second try or the third try that we're done? Game over, man. It's game over. Switching a snake over from live to frozen thought sometimes takes time and patience. And thankfully, there are a few things that you can do to make the transition a success. Lots of snakes have no trouble making the switch. For the most part, I've been pretty lucky in that respect. But sometimes you do get a stubborn noodle. Maybe it's a baby figuring things out. Maybe it's an established snake that is resistant to change. You know the old expression, you can't teach an old snake new tricks, right? That's not the expression. Oh, I'm pretty sure it is. Nope. Huh. I think people agree with me. <laughs> okay, please continue. Oh, if you'll let me, wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> The first thing is to remember and acknowledge that this might not be successful for a little while for a variety of reasons. One is that things smell different when they're dead. The behavior between a living rat and a dead one is different. Shocker, I know. Temperature difference is another possible hurdle. Not only do you have to be sure that you have thought it completely so that your snake won't have any problems digesting it, but it needs to be thoroughly warm enough, but not too hot for your snake to recognize it as food it's used to. This is particularly important with heat sensing snakes like boas and pythons. Yes, even boa constrictors. You may not be able to see the heat pits on them, but they are there. Heat sensing snakes like Monty use the heat input to identify and hone in on live prey. If the temperature is not close enough to the real deal, your picky snake may ignore the food. Add all of these things together on top of the fact that some snakes just don't like change or don't understand what you're doing by offering them garbage instead of real live food. 
it can be challenging to convince them to make the switch. So what do you do? Well, the good news is that aside from making it smell like live prey, sorry, but I don't know how to make something deceased smell alive. I, I got nothing for you there with that one. The rest of the concerns can be fairly easily met. For lifelike behavior, the solution for that is in your hands, literally. Well, I suppose, in the tongs that are in your hands and the rat or mouse is in the tongs. Don't hold it with your hands unless you want to be bitten, in which case have at it you weirdo. Either way, you can give the frozen thawed a little wiggle or drag it along their enclosure, giving your snake a scent to follow or explore and find. Put a bit of a fancy show on for your snake to give it the signals it needs to figure out that, oh, hey, I should eat this. That is, if they don't come out and just take it straight away. If or when they take it, you're not done yet. Play a bit of tug of war with the meal. Live prey resists. Make your frozen thawed prey do the same. By wiggling and struggling, you can encourage your snake to coil and squeeze, giving them a bit of exercise and give them the satisfaction of seeing that natural behavior through. You know? For temperature, you need to make sure you heat it enough without actually cooking the rodent. With practice, you can get this by touch, but a temperature gun is a very useful tool here. Ideally, you want the rodent to be around 98 to 100 degrees to best emulate living prey, but don't be afraid to experiment a bit. Maybe your snake likes their meal a little cooler or hotter. Some folks have had success with picky ball pythons by dipping the thawed and warmed rodent into boiling water for just a few seconds and immediately taking it out and offering it. Sometimes, there are snakes that don't like dripping wet rats or mice, so you may need to towel dry the prey before you offer it to them or have the prey in a Ziploc bag as it's defrosting so that it stays dry. You can also try something called braining the prey. It's kind of as gruesome as it sounds, sorry. It involves cutting into the skull so that the scent of the brains and or blood can entice them to eat. Yeah, no, I know it doesn't sound nice, but it can be quite helpful. You might need to experiment a bit to find what your snake likes. So what do you do when you've done all of these things and still your ball python or corn snake or whomever still refuses to take the dead prey? Have you tried a different meal option? Meaning, are there any different types of prey items that you can substitute? I went through this with Tassara and Romeo's baby dumerals. Right from the get-go, none of the babies would take frozen thawed, which, is common for baby snakes. They would, however, take live hopper mice. We tried integrating frozen thawed rat pinkies, frozen thawed hopper mice, obviously. For something with a different scent, we tried mice pinkies, thinking maybe something smaller would be easier for them to accept. No go. But then someone suggested trying frozen thawed quail chicks, and that did the trick. Jen and Mike, Okay, I realize that there might be multiple gens and or mics watching, so if you are a gen and or a mic and have no idea what I'm talking about, um, hi, hi. Um, you're not the one I'm talking to. I hope you have a great day anyways though. But if you are a gen and or mic and you do know what I'm talking about, then yeah, hi. Thank you for that suggestion. It worked. All of the babies happily and now reliably take frozen thawed quail. And with many weeks of good meals in them, we can start offering rodents again without worrying that they are in peril or starving if they don't take it. Which leads me to my next step, which is patience. You might have one of those awesome snakes that easily makes the switch from live to frozen thawed without blinking an eye. You know, I'm sure that there's a joke in there somewhere about how snakes can't blink their eyes because they don't have eyelids and haha -ha, funniness. However, I didn't think of one and I can't right now. So please just imagine I said something funny about that and tell me what I definitely did say down in the comments below. <laughs> but what a lot of snakes really need is time. It might take a minute for them to decide if and when they're willing to make that change. The good news is that these guys, if healthy, can go a long time between meals. And it might be a long time before they are hungry enough to kind of give Frozen Thawed a try. For me, following this tough love approach is the hardest part. I know that this snake, having had lots of weekly meals, can go months without eating with no negative effects on her health. But if she skips a few weeks, I'm going to start worrying. I can't help it. Remember, it's your job and mine to be consistent and patient and calm throughout this process. As long as they don't show any signs of either losing weight or any ill effects to their health, and that includes their mental health, you are good to continue working with them to switch them over. 
However, if they become very withdrawn when they used to be very active and would want to come out and engage with you, or if they start to lose weight, then it's time to reevaluate where you are in this process and maybe take a different approach or return to feeding live for a while and revisit this at a later point in time. That is totally okay. The most important thing is the health and wellness of your snake, and that trumps whatever the state of being is of the prey you are feeding it. Feeding frozen thawed is safer than live, but feeding live is obviously safer than starving. But really, sometimes tough love is what they need, and you need to be strong and not cave to their adorable little snoop begging for the food they feel you have deprived them of. You big meanie. I'm sorry, I don't mean to make you feel bad about this. You're doing great. Another thing to consider. If there is a meal they prefer, live rodent or quail, or maybe frog if it's a stubborn hognose snake or garter snake, you can also rub the warmed frozen thawed prey against that preferred prey item so there's a scent transfer. This can help a lot. I've had to do this with Higgins, my hognose snake, or I think garlic knot? I got Higgins from someone selling him on Kijiji. He was her very first snake. She was told that hognoses make great first snakes. Probably not the best choice for her, but here we are. She really struggled getting him to eat. In fact, over the two years she had him, she said that he only ate for her two, maybe three times. Once we got him and he settled in, well, he didn't take his first meal. But the next week, and like the three weeks after, he immediately took a frozen thawed mouse. Great, we fixed Higgins. And then he stopped for months and we had to try different strategies and what ended up working was frog meat. Higgins liked that, but we couldn't always get frog meat from the grocery store. So we tried scenting the mice with the frog meat and that kind of worked and Higgins sort of got back to eating mice. But he's not the most reliable eater. We actually discovered quite by accident that Higgins likes to eat mice that are a little more juicier than normal. And that's our secret weapon to get him back on his regular eating schedule. When Higgins is eating normally, all good. If he goes off food, well, that's okay too. But if he goes off four to six weeks without eating, then I leave a mouse in his enclosure for a little longer than would normally be recommended. And he eats that disgusting mess every time and gets right back to eating on regular schedule. For a while, anyways, I mean. He's still Higgins, what can you expect? Hey, uh, to be clear, I'm not talking about leaving it in there for days or anything like that. I feed my snakes in the evening usually, and if a snake doesn't take their meal right away, I will leave it in the enclosure overnight. If it is still there first thing in the morning, then it gets tossed or maybe fed to a different snake or jub jub my tagu. For Higgins specifically, I don't take it out in the morning. He'll usually come out early to mid afternoon and eat it. Gross. If it is still there when it starts to get like to supper time, then I take it out at that time. I, I just wanted to be clear that I'm not just leaving a mouse to rot for days on end, hoping Higgins will eat it. That's not what we're doing. <laughs> I just hope that clears it up. Back to the rest of the video, sorry for the interruption. A snake's digestive system is pretty robust, and many species have been observed scavenging. So a little more seasoned rodent once in a while is not a big deal, but still, ew. And feeding your snake a rodent way past its due date is not a good thing in general practice. And I'm not suggesting that you do this with your snake. I'm simply sharing this story to illustrate that sometimes snakes do really weird things, and that is okay. So, getting a snake to switch to frozen thawed can be hard, but do you know what's not hard to make the switch to? Being an engaged viewer. Yes, you, right now, watching this video, you can make the switch to being an engaged viewer, and it is as easy as hitting the subscribe button and the like button. That stuff really helps the channel out. If you want to put that to the next level, leave a comment. That kind of engagement really helps the algorithm too and helps get this video out there to the rest of YouTube. You can head on over to Instagram and follow me there where I post pics and reels of my reptiles daily. And if you want to take your engagement to the max, then head on over to patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl and choose one of the options to support my channel financially. See, I told you you can make the switch that best fits you. And if there are instances where you do everything right and your snake still refuses to take frozen thawed, is that okay? Yes. Does that make you a bad keeper or means that you failed in some way? No. 
It's okay for your snake to continue eating live and nothing says you can't try switching again sometime down the road. Just please don't post videos of feeding live for entertainment. Non-snake people often don't understand and there is no shortage of people looking to capitalize on fear and misconceptions to fuel anti-snake or anti-pet efforts, you know? In any case, there is a lot to consider, morals and ethics aside, as to whether or not feeding live or feeding frozen thawed best fits your situation. But if you'd like to make the switch, I hope that this video helps. If you have had a snake that ate live and made the change to frozen thawed, I'd love to hear whether it was an easy or hard switch for you to make. Were there any other tips, tricks, or resources that you use? There are plenty out there in the interwebs that could help too. Let's share and respectfully help each other out, eh? This is a community after all. Well, that's it for today, folks. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, please like, subscribe, comment, all the YouTube-y stuff. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. He's a little pretzel boy. Look at the little pretzel boy. Oh! Yeah, that's not weird at all. <laughs> Just smell your pets. I wasn't zoning out. I'm Slowly bonding with your snake. I'm bonding. This is not the time. Bonding. Holy bonding. It's bonding.